This is KVU News at 5. Flames on a plane. Passengers and crew evacuated as crews worked to put out the fire. A probable human case of West Nile virus in Williamson County and more samples test positive of the virus in other cities in Central Texas. A blow for Hillary Clinton. The FBI says it has discovered a new batch of emails and it's reopening its investigation. Good afternoon. I'm Terry Griffith. And I'm Tina Shively. Quita is off tonight. Two big developing stories we're following for you. That airplane fire out of Chicago where passengers have been evacuated. But first, we begin with a probable human case of West Nile in Williamson County. The health district says they are investigating the case right now and that testing has found nine samples of mosquitoes carrying the virus throughout Williamson County. There has also been a mosquito sample test positive for the virus in Cedar Park. Last week, a mosquito sample taken from the villages of Berry Creek in Georgetown also tested positive. Tonight, there will be pesticides sprayed in that area. You'll remember earlier this month, Cody Hopkins from Elgin was diagnosed with the West Nile virus and died. His family believes the virus is to blame for the 13-year-old's death, but they are still waiting on results to confirm that. Now to that developing news out of Chicago's O'Hare Airport tonight. It was an American Airlines flight bound for Miami. Take a look at that. That was forced to abort takeoff due to a blown tire. That led to an engine fire on the right wing of the Boeing 767. Crews have since put that fire out. Passenger and crew members were able to evacuate. No one was seriously hurt. State leaders say the Supreme Court's ruling on same-sex marriages doesn't cover partner benefits. KBU's Amber Downing joins us live in the newsroom. Amber, the governor, lieutenant governor, and attorney general issued a brief today asking the Texas Supreme Court to interpret parts of the same-sex law. Terry, yes, they're essentially asking the Texas Supreme Court to look at the impact on taxes and benefits of the U.S. Supreme Court decision legalizing same-sex marriage. Now, this is file video from that day in Austin. The brief put out today, though, stems from a case in 2013 in which the Houston mayor gave benefits to same-sex spouses of city employees who were married in other states. The brief says when the mayor did this, same-sex marriage was illegal in Texas, and thus Houston taxpayers were made to pay for illegal benefits. It states, Obergefell's judgment does not include a command that public employers, like the city of Houston, take steps beyond recognizing same-sex marriage, steps like subsidizing same-sex marriages, employee benefits. Now, on the same terms as traditional marriages. The CEO for LGBT political advocacy organization Equality Texas finds this brief troubling and believes it'll be a waste of taxpayers' money. I think it's disappointing because it demonstrates that our governor, our lieutenant governor, and our attorney general uh, are still failing to accept the ruling that was issued by the United States Supreme Court. They're looking for ways that they could still legally discriminate, and I would suggest uh, that that simply doesn't exist. The brief asks Texas Supreme Court to clarify whether lower courts have to rule in favor of same-sex marriage when it comes to granting benefits. In essence, whether the Supreme Court decision forces taxpayers to pay for those benefits. In the newsroom, Amber Downing, KVU News. Thank you, Amber. New at 5, for the first time, the U.S. Supreme Court will take up the transgender bathroom issue that has split the nation. The nation's highest court will be reviewing a Virginia case where a school district required students to use bathrooms of their, quote, biological identity. The Obama administration has recommended that public schools let transgender students use bathrooms that align with their gender identity. Now, the high court's decision could eventually impact Texas schools. In the race for president, the FBI today delivered a bombshell in the last days of the presidential election campaign. The agency is once again investigating Hillary Clinton's emails. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez with the story. Just 11 days before the election, the announcement creating shockwaves. The FBI reopening the investigation into Hillary Clinton's email use. Director James Comey explaining in a letter to Congress, in connection with an unrelated case, the FBI has learned of the existence of emails that appear to be pertinent to the investigation. This just months after the initial investigation into the former Secretary of State's use of a private email account and server was closed. I see evidence of great carelessness, but I do not see evidence that is sufficient to establish that Secretary Clinton or those with whom she was corresponding 
both talked about classified information on email and knew when they did it, they were doing something that was against the law. No comment yet from Clinton on the trail today in Iowa. Her running mate, Tim Kaine, only more. with this yeah. to say. Hey, hey, comment hey, on that Tim. FBI uh, reopening the investigation. Just got to read a little, got to read a little more. Got to read a little more. While Trump on stage in New Hampshire wasted no time applauding the announcement. I have great respect for the fact that the FBI and the Department of Justice are now willing to have the courage to right the horrible mistake that they made. And a source tells ABC News this FBI probe was sparked by an unrelated criminal investigation into someone Clinton was in contact with while she was Secretary of State, stressing the emails that are being looked into were not sent by Clinton and saying this review likely will not be completed before Election Day. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, New York. Well, most of us can leave the jackets at home for this Friday night football. Mild in the 70s across the area from the first quarter to the fourth quarter. Here's a look at that Friday football fever forecast. Clear skies, light south-southeasterly wind, and 77 at kickoff. We'll be in the low 70s in Austin by the fourth quarter with a few more clouds in the sky. Probably in the 60s, though, for the most part over the hill country. So a couple of degrees cooler out west. Out there right now, mainly sunny temperatures are in the 80s, 84 degrees at San Marcos, as mild as 86 at Buda. The weekend will feature clouds and fog in the morning, but a lot of sunshine and warmth in the afternoon. The good news is a change in this weather pattern, slightly cooler temperatures, and even better news, rain returning to the forecast for next week. Much more on that coming up. All right, Albert, sounds great. Thank you. Reports of phone scams are drastically down across the country, especially right here in central Texas, after police recently raided scam centers in India. These centers send out fraudulent IRS phone calls asking people to pay up. In the past year, the Better Business Bureau has seen 60 cases in Travis, Williamson, Hayes, Bastrop, and Caldwell counties. Since October 6th, there have been zero cases. These IRS scams have plagued people for years, and this is great news for Americans. This is fantastic for people who just really are annoyed by these IRS calls, as well as the people who feel like they've been scammed. Now, the scam calls are down across the country, in fact. While the Better Business Bureau had been receiving about 225 scam reports nationwide per week, since the first bust, that number has dropped almost 90 percent, down to just 24 per week. We've got an alert for people flying out of Austin Berkstrom International Airport. You may start to see some changes as airport construction gets underway. As Corey Coffin explains, it's all happening when the airport is seeing an increase in travelers. After a few cozy hours on a plane, leg room, not so much. Little feels better than grabbing your luggage and going. Right when you got out of the plane, like it was pretty much straightforward. Right to baggage. ABIA has always been a Goldilocks airport. Not too big, not too small, just the right size. You don't have to go through the different terminals, different this, different that. But it's no secret it's growing rapidly. Traveler numbers are up again this year, 5% over last year. The pace has already outsized the facilities. The airport currently, the way it's built, is built to handle 11 million passengers a year. And last year we were at 11.9. So nine more gates will be added to the east terminal. During construction, passengers will go through temporary jet bridges. It'll be done in 2019. We'll be able to take a maximum in of 15 million passengers per year. But that's not all, folks. In the next few years, expect an expansion of the entire ABIA campus. Retail store coming online. 2,000 more parking spaces next to the highway. We also have a barking zoom for. Uh, pet animal service that's going to be coming on uh, at the beginning of next year. You heard that right. Open 24 hours a day for your furry friends. It's just, you know, healthy and robust, uh, steady numbers for us on a consistent basis. And so we're enhancing the airport and the experience to, to meet those numbers. And speaking of those numbers, Corey tells us even though we are up this year, it is not a record. ABIA hit its peak travel in July of 2015 at 1,165,811 people. This past July was about 30,000 shy of that. It's still a great place to fly in and out. Absolutely, yeah. Well, tensions are rising as officers arrest hundreds of pipeline protesters. A call on the government to step in as high-powered celebrities jump into the fight. You're watching KVU, where trust is earned.